Well, hello, Tony. How are you? Hi, good morning, Paula. Good to see you. It's good to see you too. Thank you. Thank you for taking some time to chat and to give us a little bit about your thought leadership. So tell me, who are you and what do you do? Well, my name is Tony Lauro. I'm Director of Security Strategy and Technology for Akamai. Uh, Akamai is a company that's been around since 1998. We basically make the internet faster and more secure uh, for billions of people every single day. So it's no no small task. What does your day-to-day -day look like? Yeah, so uh, my my job is I interface with uh, the C-suite at uh, you know Fortune uh, 100 uh, and 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 above companies, uh, basically uh, working with them to uh, understand what are their goals uh, in terms of reducing risk, right? So the idea that we all use the internet uh, to run our business uh, is probably a little bit different than you would have probably categorized it 20 years ago. But without the internet, uh, you know, most modern businesses cannot function. So I work with uh, CISOs and CIOs. CISO is a Chief Information Security Officer, uh, and essentially work with those groups to make sure that the direction that we're going uh, as far as creating technology to solve new problems and risks that they have uh, aligns with what their problems are and what they foresee the future to be. What do you like to do? What do I like to do? Well, uh, I have uh, four children and a wife, so I love spending time with them. Uh, it, it, that may sound kind of a blase answer until you meet my children and my wife. They are so fun and so awesome. There's never a dull moment with them. Uh, I also like doing uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and submission grappling, which is uh, kind of fun. It's basically like uh, folding clothes with people still in them is what I kind of liken that to. <laughs> uh, and then I also uh, am a skateboarder. So I've been skateboarding since uh, the, the late 80s. And, uh, you know, try as I may, I, I still can't stop doing it. Right, so. to be a technology, cybersecurity executive, thought leader, there's a large amount of personal branding that you have to do with that. So what do you think about personal branding? So what? Do you think about the way our brand we brand ourselves? Is that changing, especially with the metaverse coming on? And then if so, what do you suggest we start doing differently? Well, I think uh, if you look at kind of what social media has done to personal branding, um, the, the one positive thing I think that has come from it is that people are really encouraged to be themselves, right? Uh, there's a famous quote that says, uh, in a world that's constantly trying to make you something else, being yourself is the greatest accomplishment. Um, and I think that in, in personal branding, uh, even in a corporate setting like, like I'm at, I'm encouraged to be myself. I'm not a, <clears throat> you know, a PhD graduate of MIT like many of the people at Akamai, um, but I do um, have many, many years of experience and knowledge and, uh, and I bring that to every uh, interaction. Uh, but me being myself, I think, is probably the most important thing because that's what creates a genuine experience, right? So whether or not you're interfacing with the C-suite uh, or you're, um, you know, you're speaking at a conference and you want people to take away something from what you say mm -hmm. um, and remember it, really being yourself is kind of that first step. And I think that's probably the biggest way in which things are changing uh, for the better. Now, I always say if yourself is a terrible human being and uh, then you got something else to work on. Uh, but being yourself, I, I would say, is probably one of the biggest things that, uh, that that is changing in the way that we brand ourselves. So the World Economic Forum came out with another another survey, another report that said we don't even have the skills by 2025. We won't even have the skills that we need in the workforce. So with this you know, as we know, as we're going towards this new future, post-pandemic, more Gen Z in the in the workforce, what do you think are gonna be the necessary leadership attributes that we'll need to develop in order to prepare for 2025, 2030? That's a great question. Uh, I do agree. There's a lot of um, uh, emerging needs in our workforce that don't even, the jobs don't even exist yet. Right in the areas of epidemiology, neuroscience, virology, 
And then if you go on the technical side, machine learning, data science, uh, you know, artificial intelligence, all these things, uh, you know, there's a huge gap. Cybersecurity obviously is one of those. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, one of the challenges is uh, no matter what you learn when you're getting your education, um, the final bit of, you know, kind of graduation um, advice that you get is now go out and take action. Mm -hmm. Make something happen. Go change the world, right? And this is uh, this is probably the biggest thing that separates um, the the learned from the doers, mm -hmm. right? So as you learn, as you get your education, as you figure out what's going to happen next, your next step is to make something happen. Uh, and by that, I mean, don't be afraid of failure. If you're not failing, you're probably not trying hard enough. Mm -hmm. um, I, I always joke, uh, you know, I feel like Thomas Edison sometime, right? Like I've, I've figured out 3,000 ways not to make a light bulb. I figured out 3,000 ways to do something wrong but I'm always trying and I'm always trying to move forward. And I think that that is something that the newer generation has to keep in mind and can't be afraid of making mistakes uh, because you know um, the, the impediment to action uh, is action, right? What stands in the way becomes the way. If we have people you know, above us and we've got a team that's quote unquote below us, right? That we're managing and they make a mistake we need to be able to defend them. We need to be able to cultivate that culture of failing and be able to say, you know, this actually is a good thing for the company. Yeah, and to, to be honest, I think in the workforce, things are changing from that perspective. Kind of the old school, uh, you know, model for if you do something wrong, all of a sudden your boss is coming, standing right over your shoulder and they're looking at you and they're saying, what happened? Why did this go wrong? Why did you fail? Uh, but, you know, as I see more people uh, understanding what true leadership means um, and understanding how to communicate with human beings properly, <laughs> they would come over and they, they sit shoulder to shoulder with you. Mm. They look in the same direction and they say, hey, let's look at this. How can we fix this? Right. Yeah. Um, and what did you learn? What do you think went wrong? Uh, and that's not to dumb it down or to talk down to anyone, but it's to really let people know that uh, mistakes uh, are not problems. Uh, the only problem arises when you don't fix those mistakes and when you don't learn from it. So sticking with this 2030 theme, where is cybersecurity heading? What, what can we expect in 10-ish years from now? Well, I mean, there's already changes that are happening right now as we speak. So you think of uh, the difference between you're logging into um, maybe your website where uh, you have a subscription to um, uh, to maybe a music service, right? When you log in, you go through a certain process. Um, that's clean and simple. Then you log into your social media account and you notice there's a little bit more friction there. There's a little bit of, okay, well, uh, if you've enabled things like two-factor authentication, you might get a text message, or if your phone's already logged into that social media account, it'll say, was this you? And then you tap the button, right? Then you step up and say, okay, now I'm logging into my bank. Uh, and in my bank, I have to get a two-factor uh, auth pushed to my device, or I have to, you know, the security uh, measures are much more um, uh, stepped up, right? Mm -hmm. Now take all of that and tell me, when you're purchasing a game while you're wearing a VR headset, how do I know that it's you wearing the headset, right? Mm -hmm. Without doing retinal scans, how do I, uh, you know, know that the person whose account is logged into this um, this VR headset mm -hmm. is the person who's actually using it, right? So, um, and and a lot of the answer to this comes down to, um, you know, things like you know, machine learning, artificial intelligence, understanding what the paths are that that user normally makes, um, what it looks like uh, in inside of the, the headset when they're making decisions, et cetera, mm -hmm. to try to wrap a little bit of intelligence around 
uh, who this person might be and what their normal actions are, right? Um, and the real challenge there is as we look at the new experiences, we already have multi-device experiences, right? Yeah. Where you're watching the FIFA World Cup and all of a sudden you have like a little partnering um, experience on your phone or on your iPad that's showing stats about the background of the players and all this good stuff. Um, because of those new experiences that, that users frankly are demanding of us, we have to now think two, three, four, five years ahead to understand what the changing environment is going to look like in terms of how do we secure these experiences? How do we make sure that people are safe online? Um, and, and that's really the big challenge. So the answer there is a, a long and sorted one, uh, but it starts with understanding more about who the users are. Hmm. Uh, maybe not even from a personal perspective, like my name, but as the profile that's assigned to me, how do I understand what it looks like when Tony Laro interacts with the internet? Um, and as a user of a service, if you opt into that, uh, I think that's gonna be uh, probably the main direction things are gonna be going. That's really interesting. I didn't expect you to say that. And that lends itself to marketing as well. I mean, the personalization, right? So you may not know the actual demographics or the name, but you do know their, their what, what they do, right? How they act, how they, their characteristics, how they think almost. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, and the, and the main point there uh, is you want to be providing a service for people that want it from you. Yeah. So that's why it's great to understand who they are, uh, demographic, you know, what kind of things they like, because now you're giving people what they want instead of, you know, dropping pamphlets from an airplane, hoping that someone wants to come to your nail salon. Yeah. Right? Um, and I think that's the difference. And that is the blended nature of both marketing and where cybersecurity comes into play as well. Brief answers. All right. So All right. first question. Favorite Disney character and why? Uh, favorite Disney character and why? Well, now that the expanded universe includes Marvel, I'd have to say Iron Man. Oh, uh, that's good. He's a person without superpowers that has done great things through technology and better understanding of the world. So, Star Wars or Star Trek? Uh, I would say Star Wars for the uh, for the lineage and the story, but Star Trek for the message. What's your favorite Star Trek message? Uh, the favorite Star Trek message is that in the future, uh, we're all working together uh, to uh, to discover strange new worlds and to seek out life and new civilizations. But the most important thing there is that uh, all races and uh, alien uh, beings and everyone are all working together. Uh, in harmony. Now, of course, there's always going to be the, you know, the the bad guys, as they say. But uh, to me, that was really one of the key, you know, characteristics of a show that, you know, you think about when this was first written in the '60s. It wasn't very popular to talk about inclusion uh, and that kind of relationship with people. So, to me, that's why uh, Star Trek is uh, is the best message. Oh, nice. All right, last one. If you had to choose to spend the rest of your life in one place, would it be space or a tropical island? Uh, although I love technology, uh, I think a tropical island would probably be best. I could go back to, uh, you know, living, uh, you know, in a in a hut uh, and foraging from the land, fishing. Huh. Um, I could I could do that more readily than just being in the cold darkness of space. <laughs> yeah. So we should expect to see a, a series of Tony in the Wild, right? Yes, yes, yeah, a new a new series coming out next year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tony, this was a blast. Thank you so much for making the time and for sharing your thought leadership with us. Absolutely, my pleasure. <laughs>